let's search for some additional pages that we can put in a junk journal and let's talk about which papers you can use and where you can find them. Hi there, this is Luisa Heinzel. Welcome back to my channel Junk Journal Art. Today I would like to search for some additional papers papers, sorry, that I can put into this journal that I'm working on at the moment. In my last video I've shown you um, how I made this cover thing here and I already showed you these papers that I've chosen um, to make this journal. These papers come from my Etsy shop. They are called Teabag Birds. If you are interested, I have all the links down below in the description box for you. If you want to make your own journal and if you perhaps want to craft along with me here. So as you can see, <coughs> excuse me, these pages are not enough for this journal. So it's really thin. And um, of course, it would be a little bit boring if we only would um, put those pages from the printable into the journal. So um, in this video, I would like to show you um, which additional papers you can use and um, yeah, what kind of papers and also where you can find them. So <clears throat> I like to do it like this, that I take my pages, put the cover away for a moment, and then I make it like this. I will tell you in a second why I um, put it to my table like this. And the first thing I like to do is um, to take the end papers of the original book. So in my last video you have seen me cutting these out and this is really really um, gorgeous paper because it's really old and I like to um, put some pages from the original book um, into my new book. So when I cut out the pages from from an old book, then I take the end papers and um, probably some of the uh, the pages uh, from the inside and uh, put them into my signatures. I just realized that this is really thin and probably it will be a problem because the paper is breaking here a little bit but we can fix that with washi tape later and <clears throat> when I've chosen a paper I put it here to my uh, stack here and I think I would also use this here and I don't care about things like this because I like when when you can see where the this pages come from and then I just um, fold them like I want them. So you can fold them in half or, of course, you can also do it like this and make it a little bit um, irregular. <coughs> so here's another one. Let me just fold this here. And I also sometimes fold the pages like this so that they later on are not this regular looking um, when they are sewn in into the signature. So let's do it here the same and do it a little bit irregular. Then um, this journal will become yeah, a little bit more grungy and that stuff. So um, another great thing that you can use for your additional pages are such paper bags. So this is one that I got in a Happy Mail. So this once was bought by someone. But of course, you can also um, take paper bags that you get when you uh, perhaps get a gift or um, when you buy some, let me say, bananas or something like that. And you get those um, things in a store. Then, of course, you can use them as well and you don't have to throw them away. So I just <laughs> make it like this. Um, I like to remove this uh, bottom from this paper bag because there are two reasons because this is really thick when you leave it like it is so normally it would be like this of course you can do that and you can use it for decoration or to make little pockets or that stuff but for me this is too thick for um yeah such a mm, i would say relatively thin journal so i um put this there to my little uh, bunch of scrap things and then the second reason why I'm removing the this part is when I fold it now and later on um, this thing is in my signature 
then it would be like this. Here are the other pages. And then I have a pocket here. And on the other side, I have a pocket here. And that's really nice, I think. <laughs> so you can put some journaling cards in there or, yeah, whatever. Um, since this book is a book about birds, I think we need some music papers as well. So um, for me, there's, yeah, this context between music notes and birds because birds are singing and, yeah, that makes music in my ears. So um, I take this and fold it as well. And as you can see, I'm using my papers below to see um, how big this is. So this would be no problem to um, fold it in half because it's not going out of this measurements of the papers. But if you have something bigger, you can use the papers below to um, measure that it's not too big. Yeah, with your eye, you can measure it with your eye and um, you don't have to use a ruler or something like that. Um, then I also like to use some map uh, papers. So these are, yeah, from, I think, some kind of scrapbooking store. Um, they were gifted to me the other day. And um, this is not from, a, um, how is that called? This Atlas thing. I think it's the same word in German like in English. Um, but of course, you can also take a book <clears throat> where those maps are in and then just tear the pages out. That would be a good idea if you want to have some more maps on the back side or if you would like to have some writing here. Of course, you can take some old books and tear the pages out where the maps are on. Um, then I also like to use this Amazon packaging paper. So this was in the box when I ordered something on Amazon to protect the things that are in the box. And this is really nice to, to write on and you could even use um, watercolor on this. <coughs> Excuse me, please. Something is going wrong with my, <coughs> with my voice today. <coughs> Sorry. Oh, I think you have to pre prepare this with some clear gesso. Of course, you can, could also use white gesso. Or there's also this watercolor ground that you can put on here. It's some kind of this, yeah, it, it feels like gesso, like white gesso as well. But it makes this watercolor paper feeling to another surface. So you could also use that and then paint something. Or if you don't like to paint, <clears throat> of course, you could also write something here without preparing this uh, paper. And um, what I also have here, let me just bring this a little bit closer. It's a little bit <laughs> difficult. Um, so I have this old um, things here, though, uh, that are some um, bills. So this is all written in German. I got this from Janet. <laughs> Janet, if you see this video, thank you very much. So, um, yeah, let me just take some of these. I also like this yellowish paper with this yeah, nearly purple color on it. Um, all those vintage things have this different kinds of um, yeah, writing color. I, I really like that. And now here we have this problem. So uh, two problems, I think. So here is some kind of, is it perforation or that stuff? So you can easily make it like this because a machine made this here so that this is meant to tear off. I will use this as a piece of ephemera or for, for collaging or that stuff because I don't want to leave it here on my page so that this can't fall off. So because you have seen it's really easy to tear this off and I don't want to destroy my page later. So um, yeah, I take such things off and then just fold this in half. Here's another one that's a little bit more, uh, yeah, not so much going on here, but that's also nice. If you want to write something here or if you want to make a collage, then you have a really nice background from this paper. <clears throat> of course, those things also exist in a larger size. So this is approximately DNA4, I think. 
so we can use that as well just by uh, folding it in half. Let me just take this smaller pieces off so that I can see here how this will fit. So I put this here and you can see here's a little bit, um, this is a little bit too high so I just make it like this. Take my finger here. Problem solved. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, if you know me, you know that I don't like measuring and I yeah, often make my things like this without a ruler or something like that. Then I have some ledger paper. So um, these papers you can get from those ledger paper books. Um, often you can find them on those online flea markets. Um, I don't know if this is existing in your area. So here in Austria, we have a really nice uh, app that we can uh, download to our smartphone and then we can um, see what the people around us uh, would like to sell. Um, I don't know if you have this in your area, but um, perhaps you can search for online flea markets as well. And I believe um, the people overseas have more of those physical flea markets that are, yeah, in real somewhere at a date and a place. Um, <clears throat> we don't have this here in my area such much. So I think there's one um, big flea market per year. And uh, yeah, that's a really special one because <clears throat> all those things that are, um, that they sell there. Um, so the money goes to, uh, <laughs> How is that called in English? I don't know. So um, they spend it to people that don't have so much money. Excuse me, please, when I don't have the words. I, I don't know how this is called. So, uh, yeah, some more music paper. So uh, what I wanted to say is that I'm really sometimes in, in some kind of stress because... <laughs> Sometimes I see um, other people's paper and they say, oh, I got this on a local flea market. And I think, OK, OK, you have to, to wait until this year is over. And of course, with this pandemic uh, thing, there's no um, flea market here at the moment. And the last one in the last year um, couldn't. Uh, yeah. Uh, how do you say that? Uh, they couldn't make it because of the pandemic. And I don't know what this year will happen. So it, I think it would be um, in the beginning of May. And uh, yeah, I think we will not have it this year. So I'm always looking for things that uh, on the one hand I can get in the Internet and online somewhere. And um, I also, of course... Um, I'm looking what I can get for free that's laying around me. So, for example, this other piece here from this Amazon packaging. So when I order something on Amazon, I always um, save those things here. And here is another piece of a paper bag. So I already cut this. So this was from, uh, yeah, uh, here in this thing was some cheese I think that I bought and um, of course you can remove the handle so as you can see here this marks come from the removing of the handle and then you have some really nice um, pages that you can use in your journal okay so let's do it like this and I just realized that I have some of the pages that are only a tiny bit um, too big so I will just fold along here and then I will solve uh, this problem later I will show you um, how I did that <clears throat> uh, how I will do that sorry then I have this thing here this oops, this comes from a restaurant from an Italian restaurant and someone who knows that I make junk journals brought this to me. So that's also a good opportunity to get such papers. Um, just tell the people what you are doing and what you can um, use for your craft hobby. And I'm sure <laughs> there will be some people who will bring you this awesome stuff. So um, this is all about food, as you can see. 
and it's not such yeah such typical birdie themed but i don't care about that because i like this black and the brown and that stuff and i think this would fit really nice to this background papers on the one hand and also to the main pages of this uh, kit on the other hand. So I, I think that's a really nice combination. So I will take that even if the context here is not such uh, yeah, bird themed. And <laughs> I'm always struggling with such uh, shapes of the paper because I don't want to waste anything. So... Um, I can make it like this perhaps and then take this off, use that for a collage perhaps on the other page so that I get a context with these colors again. And um, by the way, if you missed the last video, you missed perhaps this information. Um, I'm making two journals at the moment. So two journals with the same paper with this. Um, I just realized that I made... Uh, really shit out of this sorry oh my gosh <laughs> i think the same thing happened to me in the german version of this video so as you can see of course this is only a single page it makes no sense like i did it sorry um but if you <laughs> if you have such a thing and that happened to you then of course you can um, still take it and make it like this and you will have a page. So um, of course you need two sides of the page. Uh, that's because when I talk and do things, I seriously sometimes have problems. Sorry, let me show you with this leftover piece what I originally wanted to do. And <laughs> let me finish my sentence from before. So I'm making two journals at the moment. So uh, one for my German speaking community and one for you as the English speaking people. And um, in this video series, I'm creating two journals at the same time. And if you want to see some variations of that, what I'm showing you here, you can also watch the German video. So um, the German video has this journal here so yeah I also collected the papers and that stuff and um, if you want to see some variations so I, I um, folded the pages a little bit different in the uh, in the other video and um, if you want to see that and also the um, tutorials that f will follow in the future um, will be the same topic but a little bit different variations. So perhaps we make a snippet roll, um, then you can see the tutorial in English here, and um, you can also watch a variation of this tutorial in the German version of the video, because there the snippet roll will look a little bit different. And yeah, perhaps you want to get some new ideas and some more ideas, some more inspiration so you can watch the English tutorial so that you can understand everything and then switch to the German video and um, watch the video without understanding anything, perhaps. <laughs> you can learn some German if you want and you can see some variations of the same tutorial if you are interested. What I also like to um, include here is this kind of paper. Um, I've often seen the people using those kind of papers. So as you can see, this is from this normal um, paper pads that you can get where you normally make your notes. But I saw some people um, who use those, yeah, just white papers, only this grid is a color, um, and they use them as they are. So I think um, Sharon... Sharon, if you are watching, hi Sharon. Um, she's doing that in her journals as well. And um, yeah, she's in my design team and I, of course, appreciate what she is doing and I love her work. And I saw this and I, I, I had to try it, even if this is blank paper. But yeah, of course, this will not stay blank, but let's see what we can do with it. Um, okay, so let's just add some of those green maps here. I think... I had this orange ones and I want to have this green ones as well because I think the colors would fit really well. And perhaps let's just fold it a little bit irregular again. 
so that it's not so boring inside. And then I um, made a little yeah, experiment with my embossing machine. So I took an embossing folder and run this paper through it. This is this kind of embossing folder that um, embosses, as you can see, obviously. And at the same time, it um, die cuts those little elements here. And I thought that would look really cute with this little, yeah, some kind of flowers or what this is, I think tiny flowers you could imagine that these are flowers of course that's also nice when you have something to feel in this journal so yeah something that you can touch and uh, touching is a good word because I also have this here um, so this is from this books for blind people um, and they can read by um, putting their finger here so I for me it's incredible that people can do that um, I got this in a happy mail and I'm really really proud that I have this um, so I will use it here and those tiny things also remind me to yeah I think to birds I don't know why but perhaps those seeds that the birds um, eat or something like that this tiny things that they make with their feet it's it's yeah some kind of context between the feeling of this and birds so yeah don't know how to explain that so hubby is calling i hope that my video is not stopping now no okay it goes on so uh, don't want to talk to him now <laughs> But the one I want to go on here. So I have to cut this and this, but I will do that with my cutting machine, I think. So let's take this off so that we can see the original size and this original DNA4 size. Um, yeah, what do we have here? Some more paper bags. Ah, uh, then I have some old book pages. I like to use. Um, those pages that have this really old writing here but of course you could take um, every page from a book that you would like and um, I like to take this yeah, beige paper not the white ones and um, I have a really nice background for some collaging if I would use this so let's take two of them those I could take out of the book like this <coughs> so that I have already have this double page you can see this holes that were made from um, these staples that um, were in the book originally um, and if you want to use that you have to make sure that you put something over it here later so some washi tape or some fabric or that stuff so that this is a really nice uh, fold and that you don't have problems with this holes when you sew in the signatures later but we can solve that um, later on um, how much music paper do we have i think not so much until now let's take another one and i also like to use music paper where perhaps sometimes um, it can happen that the title of the song that is written here fits to the topic of the book so um, yeah in this case not so <laughs> I think I will use this one because I like this more filigran um, notes that are written here and I think I will just cover the title later um, that's not matching my theme but I think that's no problem Okay, so then I have this thing here. This is from a um, dictionary. Dictionaries, of course, always are a great resource for uh, pages for your junk journal. And um, if you have some botanical books, of course, you can use pages from botanical books as well. Um, with this here, I have the problem that uh, I don't have the second page attached here because it's only, yeah, as you can see, a single page. So there are two possibilities to use those pages. On the one hand, of course, you can take it and fold it like this or straight and use the page the other way around and just put them into your book like this. That would be a really nice solution, I think. 
um, especially if you only have one page of this and not more of them. If you have more of them, of course, you can attach them to each other with some washi tape, for example. Um, and <clears throat> often when you tear pages out of books, you have this uh, yeah, not very straight line on one um, side and the other side, of course, has this uh, original edge from the book. So I like to change the direction of this uh, thing if it is possible. So if I would do it like this, there's uh, no um, reason for joy. But <laughs> if I make it like this, then I have both straight edges here in the middle and this teared ones here. And then I like to take some washi tape and additionally some glue because um, washi tape sometimes uh, sticks not so good. So I like to use washi tape in combination with some glue when I want to uh, put that into my journal, especially when I'm um, putting those pages to each other because, yeah... You will see that later. Um, later on we have to fold it in the middle, of course. And when the washi tape comes off here, when the page is already sewn into your journal, that is a really big disaster because this is really near to the middle fold and you don't have a chance or nearly no chance to get glue um, under this uh, washi tape when it comes off and to to um, repair it so I like to go the safe way and do it like this so let me just check that this is the right uh, direction then I um, take this the other way around and put some of my glue here no. oh, this glue stick is really a mess okay and then, my little tip for you, if you don't know that already, I like to put the page a tiny little bit out of the middle. So, um, no, not out of the middle, but with a, a little distance to the other page. So, as you can see, here are, I think, round about uh, two and a half millimeters in between. So... Um, let me show you in a second why I'm doing it like this. I'm just taking another piece of washi tape and then what's going on here? Let's do it like this and just glue this on top here. Cut it off. Just press it a little bit so that it's there forever. Cut these little leftovers here. And then... <coughs> we can just take it and fold it like this. And now you can perhaps uh, see the reason why I left this millimeters in between of those both pages. Because... Um, if you would put them directly to each other and then glue the washi tape and then fold it, the washi tape here will make this crumbles and waves and that stuff. Now here we have two layers of washi tape in the middle and that's not too thick to um, fold it nicely. And yeah, now we have one page out of two pages and we can take it and put it into our signature later. Um, another thing that I like to use are some board papers. I, I always like this combination out of new things and old things. And yeah, um, of course, new paper. Um, you have to buy it if you want to have new paper. I bought this here in this um, store called Action. Um, I think in America you don't know that, uh, that store, but I think you um, know those paper pads that you can get I think nearly everywhere so um, for all the people that have action in their area this um, this thing is a little bit older I think I bought it 
<sighs> two years ago, I think. Um, but perhaps you can find it online in a Facebook group or something like that. So I show you this pattern here. If you like what you see inside, you can perhaps search for it if you want. And this uh, paper pad is really awesome because it has this vellum paper, as you can see. So it's transparent with this really nice golden um, writing on it. And sometimes it's in this matching colors from the, the other paper. So this green here and um, then comes this, uh, yeah, some kind of scrapbooking paper. So, um, of course, if you take uh, one of these pages... Um, then you have a problem w later with reading this thing because obviously this is much too wide. When you put it here, you can see it's too wide for this thing. But you could, of course, um, on the one hand, cut something here and try if you can get this quote to one page, cut it on the left and the right side and then glue it together like I did it with this both pages a second ago or what I also like to do is just <laughs> make it like this so that you can't read the quote anymore but that you have some interesting things for the background that you can decorate and that you can yeah play around with and you also have some leftover uh, space here for journaling and I think it looks really nice if you journal here with a black pen for example and this shows uh, through a little bit so I mean what's in the back side shows through a little bit um, yeah so sometimes those uh, yeah paper pads are not in a size that you can use directly so I mean that you can read this thing but oh this is nice as well I think you can also um, find smaller ones or, of course, you could make a copy of it. Perhaps you can also copy it to a piece of vellum paper um, and make it in a little bit smaller size. <clears throat> that would also be a possibility. Or sometimes you have the luck that you have uh, this size of quotes on the paper so that you now can make it like this, fold it in half, and then later you have one thing to read here and one thing to read here okay so let's see if something is here inside that's that would fit so i took out some pages here for the german version of the video so <laughs> i'm a little bit uh, confused if we have the right colors here and enough of this paper this time i would like to take some um thicker paper, some thinner paper, so a really good variation of paper, of different kinds of papers for this journal. So, uh, yeah, let's see what we have here. Is this green matching this? Oh, I think that would be okay. And I think, what's this? Says, Keep smiling and one day life will get tired of upsetting you. Love what you do, whatever you are, be a good one. Huh. Okay, so let's, let's just take this one as well. I think that was the rest, yes. But this... I want to have this oh that's nice as well that's really nice okay so let's take it just fold it okay and um, this one here is also from such a paper pad but as you can see it was a little bit uh, smaller, but it was the same thing like this. It's white on the back side, but I don't care about it because I have much white here, so I can use that. And I'm not sure if I already talked about that. I don't know. I, I think no. So I have some of those um, uh, paper bag pieces and I just run them through my embossing machine and as you can see um, I just 
folded this before I run it through the machine into half like this. Then I put the folder here, run it through the machine. Then I took the folder, put it to the other side and run it to the machine uh, through the machine again. So that now I can just make it like this and I will get two tiny pages with this really cool embossed uh, thing here on top so um, I can just make it like this so yeah uh, I think you have understood this and for this piece here I folded it three times uh, so two times but that I have three of this so I made it like this and then put the folder on top and run it through the machine and I think that's a really cool way to get um, yeah this embossed things uh, more than one at a time and as you can see it worked really well even if this were three layers of paper and now we can decide what to do and I think we will make it like this fold this to the other side so that we can make um, a pocket here later so I will show you that in the future videos and this is the page itself and then I just lost something uh, because what I wanted to show you. Ah, here it is. Sorry. So I took another paper bag and um, made this little thingy here. And um, yeah, you can guess how I did that. I just put the folder, the, the embossing folder uh, here. And it's also a folder that can cut out such things so th that I now can just again remove the bottom of this thing here and I don't care about this um, really messy edges do it like this and then I can just fold this and later again we have some pockets one on this side here and the other one here but this is a special one <laughs> as you can guess because you can put a journaling card or something like this uh, that uh, into here so that you can see um, what's inside through this little cutting here I think that's really nice hopefully <laughs> and um, the last thing that I want to include is this paper here I got this um, in a happy mail as well so some papers were um, wrapped in here and I just want to use that because it's really really awesome look at this it's a little bit higher than the other paper it's some kind of yeah some kind of special um, embossing as well I think so I will just uh, remove this stamp that goes into my stamp album later and then I make it like this and I also like to use the folds that I have in a paper as you can see this is not so extremely folded so I could make it with my finger like this and this paper would be um, flat in the end but sometimes you have uh, yeah, this folding in a paper or especially in such paper bags that you want to use that you can't get rid of and then I like to use this fold to line it up with my um, page like this and then tear or cut here and here or only here and make a pocket out of the rest so that I have this here for my fold for the page later and I have no problems with ugly folds in the middle of the page so uh, yeah hopefully that makes sense so um, I also like to yeah, try to waste uh, no material so I line it up and I make it like this so that it is um, the size of this page later without any wasting any paper so um, to make it like this I leave the rest on the right side show you in a second why and then just I think I need a ruler where's my ruler ok 
Okay, so now I have a complete piece of this here left and no, uh, not those tiny scraps that, yeah, are laying around everywhere. <laughs> so as you can see, the other side is a little bit too long until now, but of course you can make it like this and then fold it to the inside so that we get a pocket here later as well. Of course we have to sew or glue this, but then this will become the pocket. Okay, so um, I think that's it for the moment. I would like to um, make some signatures out of this now. So as you can see, this is really much paper now. And it may be, uh, it may happen that I will take out some of the pages or that I um, change uh, some paper. So perhaps I take one out and put another in that can happen during this process. But um, this, I think, is a good variation of um, yeah, different kinds of papers and also different sizes. And then if you want to make a journal by yourself, of course, you can just test it and put it into your cover. Um, like this to see how much paper you have. So this is already really much. Um, let me show you the German uh, version of this. <laughs> yeah, I call it German version. You know what I mean. The other journal that I've made um, or I'm working on. Um, here when I... You can't see anything. Sorry. Uh, when I press this, you can see this is not such thick as the other one. So yeah, if I want them to be the same thickness i have to add some papers here or take some papers out of the the other book but you can um, get an imagination how thick such a book can be without any embellishments of course in the end when you put the papers in and you just press it like this then you can feel a little bit um, how this will turn out in the end so um i will now um put those pages into some signatures so that I can get an imagination how many signatures I will need here. I have to measure this, of course. And I also um, would like to decide if I want to leave the spine as it is or if I want to um, enlarge the spine a little bit. Because, yeah, if you know my other journals, you know that I like to have much space for playing around and that I normally don't like those thin journals <laughs> but um yeah i have to decide that i think out of camera because it would be really boring for you to watch that but of course for your own project if you want to craft along um, a little tip if you have too much pages and you think okay for example the book is like this that would be absolutely no problem because you can always cut the spine make it larger so that all your papers fit into there. So that's nearly no problem. Um, the only thing that you have to think about is, um, yeah, when you made your signatures out of those papers, that, how can I say that? When you press the book here, it should be really thin in comparison to the spine. So, because you want to add some embellishments, you want to add some journaling cards, you want to glue something to the pages. So make sure that you have yeah, enough space left to embellish the journal. But I will talk about that a little bit more in detail later as well. And yeah, when I think about it, I'm nearly sure that I will remove the spine and enlarge it because yeah, this is really thin. Okay, so um, I will just go and um, make some signatures and in my next video I will show you how I arranged them. And in the next video I also would like to show you a really, yeah, effective way to um, bring some color bridges through all the pages that you have. So what I'm talking about. Um, you have some colors from your paper, so for example from the printable here, and you want some tiny things in red, or you want to have some tiny things in green, 
or you want to have um, some of those yellow brown accents to your other pages that you um, have chosen and especially to perhaps this neutral papers or perhaps you have not found some papers um, in the right color so if you don't have this yellow or this green um, and you only have neutral papers perhaps you would like to add some color spots um, in some areas that match the other papers and go through the whole journal i will show you a way that i just figured out for myself that's really easy really fast really effective so that you get this thing all over your journal and that will look really nice in the end and um what I will do in the next video is also something that can perhaps bring your um, creativity to another level. So I don't want to sound arrogant, but sometimes we have this um, mm, this routine with our journals. So especially if we make um, more than one journal in a year. So I mean, if you perhaps um, do this regularly and we have made many journals, then it can happen that our brain says, okay, I have to, um, for example, put a stamp on the bottom right corner and here it has to be. My stenciling has to be along um, all the edges or something like that. Some things that our brain has, um, yeah, soaked <laughs> and we reproduce it with other patterns with other colors but we re we reproduce it um, when we make a no new journal and i want to try something that can bring more creativity to those things like this color bridges like stamping and stenciling and that stuff so if you are interested in that um please watch my next video if you not uh, have subscribed to my channel until now please um, <laughs> consider if you would like to do that so just hit this little thing there um, and you can also hit this bell i don't know if youtube um, informs you when you when i upload a new video because this uh, notification bell thing is a little bit weird in the last uh, month i think it is broken or something like that but um, of course you can follow me also on Instagram or on my Facebook page to get um, notified when I upload a new video. And I also will post some uh, photos of these projects on my Instagram. So you can find all those informations down below in the description box. I would like to um, see you on my other social media platforms as well, of course. And um, yeah, if you like this, please leave a comment or a thumbs up or something like that. Hopefully we will see you the next time. I wish you all the best. Bye bye.